Are you ready, everyone? It's time for Creationism for Kids! Good evening, folks. My name is Trent, and I'm a Triceratops, okay? Me and my good friend, uh, Matt T-Rex, are gonna read a great story to you today, okay? Now, many folks think that, uh, we were born in the late Cretaceous period. That's about 68 million years ago, okay? That's... Those people are dumb, okay? They're stupid. That's idiocy. These people are living in a fantasy land. We need to... Only way to deal with that is... Uh... Luckily, our friend Danny the Dino has a story all about where we really came from. So we're gonna read it together, okay? The Adventures of Danny the Dino. Book one, In the Garden of Eden. Written by Dr. Kent Hovind. Now, folks, there are a few adverts in this book, okay? That's because, uh, we rely on your money to keep us dinosaurs fed, okay? Head on over to givetrendcash.net to donate today. Uh, I don't actually pay taxes because I'm a triceratops, so don't worry about that. Danny the Dinosaur. Hi, boys and girls. My name is Danny the Dinosaur. Actually, I'm a Brachiosaurus. I live at Dinosaur Adventureland, and boy, do I have an exciting story to tell you! I'm not joking, okay? It's a perfect, great story. It all started a long time ago when God made the whole world. God is so smart, okay? He knows everything. Wow, what a beautiful creation he made. He made this hammer. He made the trees. Wow, okay. This all happened about 6,000 years ago. God made everything we see in just six days. He could have done it faster, but he wanted us to have time to enjoy his world. So he worked six days and then rested for one. That's why we have seven days in our week. Did you know that? Now, did you know that the Romans actually had eight days in their calendar for a few centuries? Uh, Matt T, can you tell us about that? Sure, uh, the thing is that, uh, the Romans actually killed Jesus. So, uh, they did a lot of stupid things. Oh, great stuff. Thanks, Matty. On the sixth day, God created all the amazing animals. Like me. Then, just to show how awesome he was, he made my great grandpa, Daryl the Dinosaur. Everyone called him Big D. Yep. Big D. He was so big. And his neck was so long. Show up. That when he got hungry for lunch, he could have eaten all the leaves on a 50-foot tree! Ah! This is a great time to mention another product you could buy. After God made the animals, he created someone very special. He created Adam and Eve. God put them in a beautiful place called the Garden of Eden. God told them they could eat the fruit of all the trees there, except for the one tree in the middle of the garden. Now, kids, don't be scared. That's, uh, that's a smile on Big D's face. Looks frightening, but it's because he's eating. He just, he doesn't have that many teeth, so don't be alarmed, okay? One day, Big D was eating leaves in the lovely garden when he saw Adam and Eve out walking with their friend, Thomas the Tiger. They were looking at the pretty flowers and rocks. They never got tired of seeing all the beautiful things God had made. Huge trees, small trees, medium-sized trees. God's it. Genius! Sparkly stones and flowers of every color you could imagine, okay? Big D smiled his dinosaur smile. See, it's a smile, okay? Now, what's interesting here, folks, is you can actually see that bees used to be uh, about the size of a rabbit, okay? They actually got smaller to save space on the ark. Eh, my hair's a little messed up. Let me just <laughs> comb my hair. Oh, that's better. Oh, Lord. Did I look like that the whole time? Is that... Okay. Adam loved all the animals, but I think he especially loved Big D. I imagine that he and Eve would climb up on Big D's long tail and sit on his back. Big D would have thought it's so much fun to give them rides all over the garden. They could discover new wonders every day. Big D loved it most of all when he saw Adam and Eve talk with God every evening. God taught them many amazing things about the garden's plants and rocks and animals. Everyone was so happy. God was so good. 
Matty, can you explain what's going on in this picture, okay? Sure thing, Trent. What you can see here is actually a bright white light originating from the Lord's head. That's because his head is actually a high-intensity discharge light. What a lot of people don't realize is that God actually left the Earth because his head bulb needed replacing. And once he got home, uh, he didn't feel like going out again. Back to you, brother. Then one day, Big D looked over the trees and saw Eve talking to the snake. Big D had a funny feeling in his stomach. And it wasn't all the leaves he ate. Right? Right? Something was not right about this. The snake was sneaky. Why? He was telling Eve that she did not have to obey God, okay? Can you imagine that? Big D whispered quietly to himself. God loves his creations. He always wants the very best for us. Obeying God is, is the, the only way to, to be happy. Remember that God told Adam and Eve they could eat from all the hundreds of trees in the garden, except for the one tree in the middle of it. They had obeyed God for many years and were so happy. But now, with his long neck way up in the air, Big D could see Adam and Eve and the sneaky snake heading for that very tree. His heart started to beat very quickly. He was worried. What would happen if Eve disobeyed God, okay? Kids, what happens if you disobey God? Hell, okay? To disobey would be sin. Would God be angry? Would he punish them? Would God make them leave the beautiful garden? What would happen to the animals? We, uh, we call it the ball sack tree because the, uh, the fruit looked like a sack of tennis balls. Okay. Big D wanted to yell, No! Don't do it! Don't eat that fruit! But well, people don't understand dinosaur language. It was the one mistake God made. He started to run over to the tree to stop Eve, but it was too late. Before Big D could get there, Eve ate the fruit and gave some to Adam. Oh no! said Big D. God is not gonna like this. As Big D got closer, he could see Adam pulling some leaves off the fig tree. Big D loved to eat fig leaves for lunch, but he knew that Adam didn't eat leaves. What would Adam want leaves for? And what was Eve doing? Why, she was sewing the leaves together. Why would she do that? And why were Adam and Eve covering themselves with fig leaves? It wasn't cold. They sure looked funny. They were acting so strange, it was like they were afraid of something. Big D had never seen them fearful before. Fortunately, God made dinosaurs able to understand human emotions that they had never experienced before. That's because God is good. Suddenly, Adam and Eve ran and hid behind some bushes. What was going on? Big D ducked his head down behind a tree. But it's hard to hide when you're a big dinosaur. Idiot! Then Big D heard God coming for his evening walk with Adam and Eve. Just like he did every day, okay? God was calling out, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam said, we're hiding over here, God. We heard you coming, but we were afraid. God said, Adam, why are you afraid? Did you disobey me and eat from the tree that I told you not to eat from? Adam said, well, it's Eve's fault, God. She gave it to me. But yes, God, I disobeyed. Adam's second sin was being a little snitch. God said, Eve, did you eat from that tree? Eve said, it's the snake's fault, God. He tricked me. But yes, God, I ate some other fruit. Big D was hiding behind the trees and shaking because he was so scared. Anytime we disobey God, it's called sin. And Big D knew God would have to punish Adam and Eve's sin. He wondered if their happy days in God's awesome garden were over now. Would things ever be the same again? That's why animals hate humans. Especially dinosaurs. Especially dinosaurs. Big D listened as God spoke. Snake, because you did this, from now on, you must crawl on your belly on the dirt. Right away, the snake fell to the ground and slithered away to hide from God. Luckily, because God knew this was going to happen, he designed the snake to be able to move really effectively without any limbs. Adam and Eve, okay? I still love you. But because you did not obey me, you will have to leave the beautiful garden and work very hard for your food. 
and the fig leaf clothes you made, Adam, are no good. I must kill a lamb and make clothes out of his skin for you. Matt T, can you explain the meaning of the uh, clothes here? Sure thing, brother. See, what many people don't realize is that God actually had a master's in textiles. He came really close to starting his own fashion line, but decided to create the universe and everything in it instead. We can see the effects of his training in the beautiful patterns of trees and rocks today. Praise the Lord. Back in the garden, Big D started to cry big, huge dinosaur tears. He knew God was right. God had to punish sin. They would all have to leave the garden. Goodbye, garden, said Big D as he walked away sadly. I hope we can all come back someday. Although God had to punish sin, he still loved Adam and Eve very much. Adam, okay, God said, I do have a plan to fix this problem. I'm gonna send my son Jesus, okay, to Earth as a man. He will live a perfect life and then die on a cross. To pay the price for all man's sins, anyone who repents or turns away from their sin and believes in my son Jesus will be forgiven and have a home in heaven. And heaven is even better than the garden. Unfortunately, Adam was long dead before that happened, and resides forever in the fiery pits of hell. Big D had a lot of questions. What would they eat outside the garden? Would God still come and walk with them? Would the animals still get along? What if the people were mean to each other? And did God still love them? Yes, God still loved Adam and Eve. God kept his promise and sent his son Jesus to be Adam and Eve's savior. Jesus wants to be your savior too. Now folks, wasn't that a wonderful story? Remember, Jesus loves you. Any last words from you, Matty? Dude, you will go to hell. I am not joking. Thanks very much, folks. Uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, whose idea was this? Whose idea was it to get a child-sized hand puppet? This is called suffering for your art. <laughs> Those freaks, okay folks? Freaks? I said freaks. Where'd you put the pocket hammer? God, kick of the fucking stuff. There's, there's... I'm sorry, Trent. <laughs> so I can't find the hammer. God! Matt T-Rex is much less painful to work with than Trent. Ironically, I have a feeling it would be the other way around, huh?